Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at how we receive the player death event and we announce the winner. So let's dive into our game manager script. If we come down to where we spawn the actual player, let's go down into the spawn player function. You'll remember from a previous video that when it's a local player, we get their player's health controller and we add an event handler to their player died event. Now this event handler here is the on local player died. Let's just scroll down and have a look at that. So when the local player dies, we get access to the player object itself. And then we're going to send a network message saying, hey, we died and this is our current position. So let's have a look at the died helper function here. You can see that all it's doing is sending our position X and position Y, and it's turning that into some JSON that we can send across the network. The only reason we're doing that is so that when the remote players receive that event, they can position the character accordingly. The next thing we do is we remove the player from our local array, and then we destroy the player after half a second. Okay, so what happens when we actually receive this died event? Well, let's scroll up and have a look at our on received match state function here. There's a few things going on and all of them relate to respawning and whether or not the player died and whether or not the round has been won and we're starting a new one. So let's go through this individually. So the first thing we do is we get the local user's session ID. And then we get in the state here. So we're basically saying, does this match state have any state attached to it? If it does, we're going to get that string from the state byte array. And we're going to turn it into a dictionary using the from JSON extension, which is available in the nakama.tinyjson. And then we're going to do our switch statement, which is the same as you saw in the player network remote sync. So we have our opcodes died. So if we received a died opcode, we're going to get a reference to the player who died and then destroy their game object after five seconds and remove them from our players array. So we're going to say, who's the player that we need to destroy? Let's get a reference to that. Let's destroy their game object after half a second. And then we're going to remove them from our array. The next thing we're going to do is say, is there only one player left? And if that one player that's left happens to be us, well, let's just announce ourselves as the winner and start a new round. So we'll dive into that function now. So this has got a lengthy comment here. So let's see what this says. It says, get the winning player name. This will only ever be called if we are the winner. So it's fine to grab our name from here. Now you can see here it says we could get this from Nakama using the following code. There is an option in Nakama to set your user's display name. And then you can get that back out again by calling the get account async. So that is one option. However, we didn't use it in this particular instance. You can see here it says, however, as explained below in the set display name method, when testing and debugging locally, we would get the same name for all clients. That's because in our local testing, we're using the same device authentication. Therefore, in both connected clients, we're actually connected as the same user. So you'll always get the same name returned there. So we've actually opted just to do it a slightly different way in this, but this is an option should you be doing it in production. So once we have the winning player's name, we're going to send a match state async again with the new round opcode. And we're going to pass in this new round helper function here with the winning player name. All this does is it passes in a winning player name dictionary, turns it into a JSON, and we're sending that across the network. And then we're calling the announce winner and respawn function. So let's dive into that, which is below. You can see here we're setting the text on a label on the screen to the winning player name has won this round. We're going to wait for two seconds, then we're going to clear that label. Then we're going to remove this local player, so the last remaining player. Let's remove it and destroy it. And then we're going to set a new spawn point for this player, and then we're going to call the spawn player function. We're going to give it our match ID. We're going to give it our local user because we know it's ourself that we're respawning. We're going to give it the spawn index there. And then, like it says here, we're going to tell everyone else that we've respawned and where we've respawned. So we're going to call the opcode respawned. We're going to send that across the network. And then we're going to pass in the spawn index. This respawn function here simply sends the spawn index in a dictionary, transfers it to JSON, and then sends that across the network. Let's go back up to our switch statement here and see what happens in those two other opcodes. So we've got our opcodes respawned and our opcodes new round. So whenever a client receives a respawned opcode, 
it's basically just going to spawn a new player with the current match ID, with the user presence that sent the message, and if there is one, it's going to get the spawn index there and make sure we spawn them at the correct location. So as you saw before, whenever a round is actually won, a network message gets sent across to everybody else saying, hey, let's start a new round. And all we're doing here is awaiting that same announce winner and respawn function that we saw earlier, which gets kicked off after this is called. And we're passing it in the winning player name that we received from the network. Okay, so let's see how this all works in practice. Let's come back into our fish game. Let's go to build settings and click on build. I'm going to choose the Windows folder here. Let's select the folder and let's wait for this to build. Okay, so let's open up a couple of clients here. Let's turn the sound off on those. So one of them has the name Terry and one of them, let's change the name to Tom. We're going to look for a game with two players on each and let's find a match. This is just going to take a second here to find a match on the Nakama server. And once it does, it should spawn us in. So it has. So you can see here, I'm controlling the one on the left. And if I click into this one, I'm now controlling the one on the right. Let's just move around here, find the other player. Okay, you can see now that the position is updating on the screen on the left here. And no matter how fast I move and how far I jump, you can see that I always end up in the exact same position on each client screen. You can also see that the position is updating relatively smoothly on the other screen. And now let's see if the announce winner code is working correctly. So let's just fire from this left screen here. So you can see here, Terry has won. It waits for two seconds and then it respawns our character. So let's drop down on the right hand side here and let's shoot from this side. And you can now see it says Tom has won the round. Okay, we've respawned at the same position here. That's, that's fine. So let's fire again. Terry has won this round and let's come back over and Tom has won this round. So you can see that is all working. And that is it for this video. In the next one, we're gonna be doing a wrap up of everything we've covered in this series. So I'll see you there.